Hello, this is uh, Dick Biddle. I'm the head football coach at Colgate University. I mean, Nate uh, obviously is a great football player. I think uh, he was our bellwether player this past year, had a phenomenal uh, season uh, for a running back, running the ball, catching the ball, uh, blocking. Uh, he's basically a complete football player. Uh, he was really, uh, a lot of times, uh, he made plays. You know, on his own, uh, you know, things maybe were not blocked correctly at the point of attack or whatever, but he was a good enough football player to see a crease or to break a tackle. I know he, he makes everybody around him uh, look better because he's playing well and uh, he's got that ability that some people have at our level that he can make a play uh, on his own and doesn't need a lot of space. And uh, I just think probably... Uh, this is his third year, and he's been all league for three years. I, I would, you know, venture to say, you know, knock on wood, I've been here a long time at Colgate, both the assistant and the head coach, that overall he may be the best football player that I've coached in my tenure at Colgate. 2008, uh, that's when Jordan Scott played, and he was a four-year starter, was a leading rusher in the league, in all league, and all-league, and ended up being the Patriot League all-time rushing leader. Uh, we go down to play uh, Cornell. And at that point, that was the third or fourth or fifth game of the season. And Nate was playing linebacker. He wasn't even playing uh, uh, running back. Uh, so in the Cornell game, uh, it's a tight ball game in the first quarter, going into the second quarter, and, and uh, Jordan Scott uh, uh, gets, hit, gets hit on the sideline, gets hurt, uh, can't, and can't play the rest of the game. So it's a tight ball game. So at that point... Uh, uh, Nate had been playing linebacker. We took Nate and uh, they moved him over the tailback in the second half. And he rushed for close to 250 yards and scored three or four TDs. Uh, but he also still continued to play linebacker in that game. So that was quite an effort. And I think the other one was uh, he's had a lot of 200-yard games. I think this past game we played uh, we played Cornell and he rushed close to 290 yards. Probably could have been over 300, but we were way up and we pulled him out. So. Uh, uh, and I just, I just think those two stand out of my mind because of the, of the circumstances around me. Uh, you know, Kobe wants to be good at football. We want to win. Uh, and we've been trying to be a very physical team. We've tried to be, scheme-wise, being able to run the ball uh, to make people work, which opens up the passing game. So I think that that's really where we're at. But, you know, we're probably a kind of a blue-collar team that practices hard and uh, physical and needs a good running back. Well, I think, you know, I mean, at an academic school like Colgate, I think some of the challenges are that, you know, it's hard to find people that could fit the, the, the mold uh, academically get into Colgate, but at the same time be a Division One football player. That's a tough combination to find, uh, and very few schools have it. And, and the other thing is, you know, we don't technically give athletic scholarships. They're need-based, so a lot of our guys are paying money to go to school and to play football. They're not getting a free education. You know, like your scholarship schools, and Nate is one of those guys. So, and I, I think that's it. And finding the people that fit, and, uh, and I think at this level, at our level particularly, you know, you don't have any easy games, and you really got to work to win a game. And uh, everybody you play is is equal to you. So, it's, uh, and there are a lot of good coaches, and I just think it's it's a challenge that way to continue to find players that want to go through that. Sixteenth year, and the first thing we want to do is have a winning record, uh, which is important. Uh, we want to win our opening game, which sets the tone for the whole game. Uh, we want to, you know, and, and in order, we would like to win all our outer conference games because that helps the league. And the fourth criteria is that we would like to win our league and go to the playoffs. And that's really how we approach it every year. I think it's you can't say, you know, you want to go 11-0. Everybody wants to go 11-0 and set that as a goal. But if you happen to lose a game early in the season, I mean, you, know, you still have to have goals left, so you got to... We try to stage them or stagger them to where, you know, you can go from less difficult to middle difficult to difficult. So you give the team three or four different goals. It's, uh, it's a very good school academically. It's in a, a rural environment. It's a small school. Enrollment wise around 27, 2800, but it has ambitions to be a great school academically and to be, a, you know, to have competitive athletic teams and particularly in football. So I think it gives you the, the, the combination of, uh, of all those things, I think some schools can give you one, some schools can give you other, but very few can give you. And we aspire to, you know, to take our football to the to the highest level and 
play for league championships and, and play for, and, and, and that. And I think the other thing is that, uh, you know, being a small school, everybody's visible, everybody knows who you are. It's a comfortable school, uh, and that's pretty uh, neat in my opinion. Um, we just, uh, you know, COVID has kind of been noted as a giant killer. We'll go out and play people maybe on paper. We shouldn't play scholarship schools, Division One schools. We've kind of, you know, the little engine it could, and we try to rely on that. But uh, uh, I think it's just, a, you know, it's just a, a, it has a great history, and it's particularly in football, and we just try to, you know, to, to stay with that.